honor, uh, as Don said, to build a community of writers here. So it's such a treat to have other people who've been inspired by San Francisco uh, telling their stories about the city as well. So I'm going to read you an excerpt from my book now, and uh, then we're going to uh, then we're going to shift over to some music, and uh, hopefully everyone can have another sidewalk visual IPA and enjoy the music in the background. So in the book, uh, the main character Richard arrives in San Francisco uh, in a cab. He's uh, fleeing a situation in Colorado, and uh, it's kind of thrown him off. And he journeys through the city, uh, epiphany, tragedy, moment, trying to figure out his path. And uh, I use water as one of the big metaphors, and that's because uh, I did it, and my main character shares this work as a rap guy for a long time. And he comes to think of the city's streets as rivers. Um, and so the closing couple of chapters all takes place uh, during Beta Breakers, if you guys are familiar with Beta Breakers. And I'm going to read you a selection when him and his best friend, whose nickname is Fish, are moving uh, across market and about to hit the A Street Hill in uh, Beta Breakers. At this point, Richard is uh, less thrown into confusion and uh, trying to move forward, whereas Fish is still very much swimming in confusion. No fun with that. Bodies and voices streamed all around them. Shouts bounced off shouts, and staggering feet jutted in from every direction. Shoulders pressed against Richard, and he lurched to one side, looking ahead at Fish's fists raised up in a victory V, his left hand clutching the tube. The air hung dank with the scent of sweat and beer. Richard thought to himself, this is it. This is the chaos in all its glory. Is this what we would be doing every day if we could? And if so, why don't we? Why do we spend days on end in quiet, structured streets and then offices and explode every so often into something like this? Is this the natural pace? Or is the other one the natural and we just ignore it most of the time? And a giant neon pink gorilla job passed him. Richard could hear the person inside the costume panting. Up ahead to his left, a group dressed in stormtrooper costumes marched one holding a boombox playing the Imperial March. To his right, girls dressed as genies giggled, sipping tall boys through veils, and one of them tripped on her dress, dress, and they all laughed. Beyond them on the sidewalk, a woman in a unicorn outfit adjusted one of her cardboard wings sticking out from her sides. And then two topless women stood on either side of her, each with a hot pink wig and a bucket, throwing glitter up into the air and hooting at the crowd. Fish hit Richard on the shoulder. Hey, Rick Dickey, you need a refill? Richard looked down at his cup, still half full, and took a sip. Sure, top me off. And then a guy in a Santa outfit walked up to them, laughing. Ho, 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 bitches. <laughs> and he smiled at Richard. The guy's hat read naughty on the front, and when he turned and walked away, the back of his hat read nice. Girls in glittering ball ballerina outfits walked dancing, spilling beer out of their cups as they screamed, and to his right a, wind, a winding row of people dressed as sperm ran through the crowd, each one following the next, and the crowd parted, cheering them on. Fish poured more liquid into Richard's cup and held it up to the sperm. Cheers, boys! Keep swimming, everybody! <laughs> and Fish smiled and started walking again. Richard laughed and walked with him, looking out over the crowd. Crazed faces shouting into the air, lifting, li lifted high and bodies stumbling. Richard saw a family standing on the sidewalk, the dad smiling, the mom with her hands around her daughter, palms open against the girl's chest, holding it close. Three bikes rode past, one with a boombox strapped to the rear basket blaring dance music, and a, group, and a group of guys in nothing but ties and tight whiteys started dancing in awkward motions, holding cups out to their sides, circling awkwardly around two girls in purple feather skirts, leaning further back and waving their hands in the air. Up ahead was a man in plain clothes, 
moving through the crowd as if he had somewhere else to be. Richard saw, saw his face for a moment and blinked it away, shaking his head. He let his eyes trail off into the crowd of people, and the sound of voices and the feet moving all around the bikes blurred into a rush past his ears. And for a moment, he pictured a face lying on the ground, not breathing, and the sound of the crowd was water rushing past him. Then the rush was the bird from his dream coming over him, and he realized, I need to see the ocean. He tapped Fish's shoulder. Hey, Fish, I just realized something. Yo, Ricky Dicky, check that out! And Fish pointed his hand, put his hand on Richard's shoulder, and pointed with the other toward the side of the street. Three girls in Daisy Duke cutoffs with checkered shirts tied in chunky bows above their belly buttons and tilted cowboy hats danced on stone blocks in front of a bank, twirling invisible lassos in the air, moving to fading music from the back of the bike. One of the girls threw her head back and yelled, Woo-hoo! Fish let the two fall to his side and jock toward them. It bounced off his hip, flailing as he moved. Hey, ladies! And Richard walked slowly behind, thinking, I need to see the ocean. I need to keep moving. Fish twirled an invisible lasso of his own and shook his hips at the girls, and they called back to him. Richard walked up beside him. Fish stood nodding and smiling, tilting his glass toward the girls. One of them winked. He took a sip of his lobster juice. Hey, Fish, let's go, man. Yeah, yeah, okay, said Fish, waving to the girls as he made an exaggerated frown, jerking his thumb at Richard. And they crossed market, weaving between a group of Elvis impersonators. And Richard leaned over to Fish. Dude, I just realized something. I was thinking about my dream and how that fire turned into the bird and how the river. What? You have a fish over the sound of the crowd? I'm talking about my dream. Fish stopped in the middle of the road, turned, and looked at Richard. Ricky Dickina, with all due respect, this is not psychoanalysis hour. <laughs> you see a couch here? Do I have a pen and a pad? Fish held his hands out, palms up. This is a party. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Proceed directly to Shitface Avenue, my friend. <laughs> and Fish grabbed the tube and drank two fast gulps, his wig sliding slightly to one side. Fish put his arm around Richard's shoulders, and they kept walking, and Richard said, all right, I get it. And he looked around, watching more backs of heads move behind each other, blending in a whir of streaks and sounds, and he looked far ahead of him, and saw the crowd turning, bunching up at the edge of the corner as it turned to the right, then veered left, heads bobbing up and down, and he thought, it's just like how the river moves. There's a current moving forward, and there's the eddy on the side where the water swirls and stops and doesn't move, and I need to be in the current. And he felt his phone buzz and reached in his pocket. Fish took his arm away, and walked forward a few more steps, swaying a little and shouting to some girl up ahead. Richard took out his phone and read a message from Allison. A guy next to him, wearing denim cutoffs, bumped into them, and Richard turned and read his t-shirt. It said, bacon is a vegetable. <laughs> Richard looked back at the street sign and thumbed a response to Allison, and then a helicopter flapped overhead. The crowd surged onto Hay Street and moved past the long, thin park. Richard looked around at the swarm of long-haired girls in skimpy neon and bare-chested men in shorts and high tops. People marched with megaphones and airphones, and a woman's voice seared through the cloud, shouting, No sleep till Brooklyn! And a wet confetti stuck to shoes, and empty cups caromed off feet, tumbling with hollow echoes underneath the din. They cut left to the sidewalk between three men wearing nothing but trucker hats and running shoes, and another woman with a massive rainbow umbrella veering around a guy sucking on an oversized pacifier wearing a gigantic diaper. <laughs> Music floated from different houses, mixing in incoherent noise. A girl in an angel outfit sat on the curb, two others behind her, trying to reattach a wing that had fallen off. Their coat hanger halos bounced lightly on the tops of their heads, dropping golden glitter on the sidewalk in tiny bottles. All around them, people sat on porches, in windows, swinging their legs, sipping beers, calling out to the others on the street. 
Richard looked up and saw Allison skipping down the sidewalk, her blonde wig bouncing against her shoulders. In one hand, she held a cup. In the other hand, she held a soft white hat sitting loosely on her head. Hi, Allison, said Richard. Thank you all for, I hope you enjoyed the four readings. I'm now going to invite uh, Bevan back in. Come up and play, uh, he wrote one of the six songs um, that you get along with uh, the novel Sidewalk Rituals. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, we'll hang out soon. And just uh, a quick recap. If you do buy the book, 